Hey everybody, welcome back to Fifty Shades of Tay. My next guest, I am joined by living legend, <laughs> uh, the biggest Avatar so, yeah. fan of all time. I'm up there. J. Scott Campbell. <laughs> How are you? I'm great, Taylor. How are you doing? Good, good. We are in your office. We are. <laughs> I know, I always call it my office, but I, I feel like I should call it my studio. That just sounds so much more all right. art, artist-like, but I always say office. I actually do do that. We are in Scott's studio yes I need, there we go i need to try harder <laughs> oh my gosh do better <laughs> <laughs> and um I, I feel like you need no introduction so you can introduce me <laughs> I'll, I'll do i'll do my best anyways but uh if they were to ever build a mount rushmore of comic book artists you would be on that sculpture that mountain you're very kind that would probably be the top four i don't know if i'd make the top four maybe of, of a certain era maybe but 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 uh well but top four though that's, that's i didn't big... know there were only four heads on mount rushmore oh you're <laughs> just learning this oh i hate to be the one to break that to you taylor i thought there were six but you'd still be <laughs> i would maybe, maybe i'd squeak in as number six maybe you'd maybe. still be on my mount maybe. rushmore of comic book oh, artists bless your heart uh every time i come over here and i get even right now, I'm peeking at something he's working on. It <laughs> yes. like blows me away. This whole spin rack behind him is just comic books he's done over the years. Marvel, DC, hopefully one day DreamWorks when they do a Shrek comic. That's true. Hopefully. I wonder. If Dream, I don't know if there are DreamWorks comics. There must be, right? Are there Shrek comics? Uh, I have a Shrek Mad Libs. Oh, it's, I guess that's it's gently used. Published. <laughs> I should bring gently it up. used. <laughs> I should bring it over next time. I will, I will ask no follow. And. Um, Yes, so thank you so much for taking the time to oh, do this. Of course. I no, really of course. appreciate it. My pleasure. And uh, this is going to be really fun. I thought we would start this interview a little bit differently than how I normally start my interviews. And uh, I went through your comic book collection <laughs> while, you, <laughs> while you weren't looking, and I picked three of my favorite comic book covers that you've done. Mm. And I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about each of the different comic book covers. Sure. The first one is The Amazing Spider-Man. I will show it off for you guys at home. Oh, yes, yes. All the heads of the different characters through the eras of... You know, it's this was uh, one I did... It was a variant cover. I do a lot of variant covers. This was a variant cover I did last year, part of a series where there was there were several in this set. And all of them had these the same backdrop of those heads, and that was a. We do a lot. Of, there's a lot of homages that happen in the comic book industry where people recreate covers. I wouldn't say this was a direct recreation, but it was definitely inspired by Spider-Man number three hundred, which had Spider-Man crawling and then all the heads oh, behind. Yeah. So, uh, so I took some of those same heads, but then also interjected some ones that are more current and more up to date. And it was super fun. And it's funny in my mind, I thought. Oh, it's just a bunch of heads that can't take that long. Oh my God, this thing took me forever to draw Ooh. because everybody's face, you got to do a little research on it. I had like a hundred JPEGs open on my computer to try to, to try to try to figure it out. But I was very happy with how it turned out. It was very, uh, it was a very fun project for sure. Ugh, I love this comic book cover. I should have started with this one though. <laughs> Last time I was here too, I even, oh, yes. I even pointed it out. Uh, one of my favorite X-Men, oh, <laughs> Jubilee. Oh, yes. There's Jubilee in her classic 90s getup. I think, I I don't know, she, I think she still wears that. I don't know, I'm not sure what Jubilee's wearing these days. But that's the, <laughs> like, I mean, I always think of Jubilee in that that outfit. That's the, the Jim Lee era. Uh, uh, and then Bishop, Bishop behind her. This is such a fun comic book cover and just, like, the colors. Really yeah, pop. it was, it was definitely very much, I, it was an intentional, like, I'm going to celebrate the 90s with this mm -hmm. cover. Uh, that was the era. I think I even grabbed the trade dress and the the uh, the corner box that was oh, from that cool. era, which is really cool. Marvel's always really cool about letting me. I always request like, can I get this like logo from this era? And oh. they go through their archives and they send it to me, and then I can recreate the oh. cover to be a certain era. It's super fun. That is so cool. And I didn't mean, <laughs> I didn't mean to pick two Spider-Man comics, but I had to pick this one. Oh, this Spider -Punk. one is just so cool. Yeah, I loved how that one turned out. Sometimes, sometimes you get a vision in your head, and you you hope you can get the energy to translate onto the actual cover and that one was one of those ones where it's like oh my gosh yeah him jumping uh -huh. you know and getting that sort of energy even too like he's in front in front of the union jack and he kind of has like that like star shape he's kind of like bursting out of the union jack behind him so that's that was super fun i uh -huh. love the amplifier but that the hidden easter egg it's a thwip <laughs> that is so uh, i didn't even notice yeah, that. yeah instead of instead of a fender <laughs> it's a thwip uh and uh amplifier which is fun that is so cool. a little fun easter egg oh my god i love all three of these comic books i promise they will go back on the rack when i leave today 
No, no worries. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> All right, so I have a question. Well, sure. I have 15 right. I was going to say, I, I had a hunch you might have <laughs> I have 15 questions. But um, the first one is, do you remember the first comic book that you ever read? Um, the very first one, it's funny. I have a very foggy memory of going into Pizza Hut restaurants. Back when it was an actual restaurant, you had the red cups and it was a whole thing. It was an era of Pizza Hut that it's, it's, it's long gone. But I remember, like, for some reason, I'm going in there, and I, I've now traced it back that they had a Neil Adams Batman comic that they, they, I think they was, like, a promotion or something like that. And that was the very first time I remember going, like, oh, this is kind of exciting, this comic, but I don't really, I don't really have uh, a specific distinctive memory of that. I do, however, have a memory of a comic book that a friend of mine had when I was more, like, in my teen years, and that one was X-Men Annual Number 10. I'm Ooh. sorry, um, and that one was by uh, an artist named Arthur Adams, mm-hmm. who just blew my mind. And that was that's probably the comic book where I was like, okay, I've never seen artwork like this. Uh-huh. I think I might actually want to do this for a living. At that up until that point, I was thinking I'd be an animator, uh-huh. which I still am a big fan of Disney animation stuff. Like but I think that was sort of the uh, what I was thinking I would do up until that point. So that one completely hijacked me into the world of comic books. I haven't looked back since, but yeah, X Men Annual Number Ten. Oh wow, Arthur Adams. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and then that leads perfectly into my next question: How did you discover that you had this talent for drawing? You know, I've drawn as far back as I can remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, my parents even said I was drawing when I was like three or something which sounds far-fetched but they say that's what i was supposedly (laughs) doing i have no memory of not drawing in fact one of my earliest memories that i vaguely have and my parents would tell this story years and years later was they had old reruns of uh rob would like this story uh they had they had old reruns of the 60s star trek on in syndication uh and apparently i asked while this was on i asked my parents for uh, some paper, some scissors, and some tape. And as I was watching it, they said I constructed the Enterprise three dimensionally. Like I rolled into little tubes, oh the gosh. engines, and stuck it on there. Uh-huh. And I do vaguely remember this. It's funny. It's like it's one of my oldest memories. Now that's not quite drawing, but it's kind of still in that realm of like I'm going to be creative yeah. with art, art in some way. Oh, so awesome. I think I've always been that way. And then my parents were thankfully very encouraging. They were never that. Oh, you have to give this up. You know, right. they were like they were like my. I mean, my dad had been a musician my mom was very artistic so i think they never really thought twice about my interest in art and were always very encouraging i always feel bad when i hear these stories about people saying like oh you can't do that you're you're gonna be a starving artist they Uh never said that which is pretty amazing i guess uh somehow i hoodwinked them into thinking i had talent i guess (laughs) that is such a cool story number one it's awesome to hear that you have parents and number two it's awesome to hear that they were supportive (laughs) (laughs) i didn't mean to rub that one in i'm so sorry (laughs) it's okay it's okay (laughs) Moving right along. <laughs> Do you have a favorite character to draw? A favorite character? I mean, it's it, it probably still always goes back to Spider-Man. I mean, Spider-Man, I never really get bored of drawing. Some, there's some days where I just, I've drawn him too much and I have to, I have, to have a break. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, for the most part, uh, he still holds up. I mean, there's a reason why Spider-Man is so popular. Yeah. Also, too, I've never really done, as much comic books as I've done, I've never really graduated gravitated towards like the typical sort of superman blocky character right. i like batman a lot because he's kind of creepy in a way he's got that creepy edge but the sort of the generic like sort of like stone jawed like i don't tend to uh, like to draw those ones as much as like the quirky characters like wolverine mm-hmm. hulk and spider-man definitely is just he's got a strange build he gets into strange contorted proportions so to me that's totally much more up my alley than the typical generic yeah you know uh goody two shoes uh <laughs> Uh, like I said, square jawed hero. Uh, so right now, a very popular trend is that a lot of um, comic books are being turned into movies and television shows. They are. Uh, I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> wow, where have I been? I didn't know this. They're making movies of comic books. <laughs> but what? my question is kind of like the opposite. Okay. Is there a movie or TV show that has not been adapted to comics yet that you would like to see? Yeah, a certain comic called Danger Girl. I don't know what's oh, that. I think, yeah. I think somebody's sleeping on this <laughs> giant, colossal hit. That, oh, my uh, gosh. I don't know what uh, what's going on with Hollywood. They're, they're just snoozing on that one. Oh. No, there's been some attempts to try to make that. Uh, that's, that's an inside joke, guys. That's my comic book I created called <laughs> Danger Girl from the 90s. Look it up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yes, that's, that's one. We've had a couple of chances to have it turned into, you know, these 
getting these things made, kids, is not easy. It's very, very difficult making a movie out of a comic book, uh, unless you are Marvel. And even lately, we've seen that's been challenging. <laughs> okay, you said it, not me. Oh, uh, you know, I think they know it. Uh, but, but, <laughs> listen, they can't all be winners. I, I have some sneaker covers. What are you going to tell you? Oh, my gosh. Um, but uh, what, what's another one I think that I can think of? Shrek. Um, is Shrek a comic book, though? Is that, does that, and that has been a movie. Wait, what was the question? <laughs> what comic books haven't been turned into a movie? No, no, no. The question was, what uh, movies or TV shows that have not been turned into a comic? So, like, The Office. Oh, though, I yeah, misread the... your question. Oh, well, no, but, I botched but you're one. correct, though, with Danger Girl, because that's a comic book that has not been turned into a Turned into a movie. It was the other way around. Uh, you're saying a movie that hasn't been turned into a comic book. That's yeah. interesting. Because the most, most at this point kind of have. I'm trying to think. If, yeah. uh, but you're right. I don't think I've seen a Shrek one. You might have stumped me on that one. I know. Watch now. Everyone's going to comment with links to my... <laughs> well, if well, there Shrek, are out there... There's probably... Yeah, there's probably... Because Shrek is now... What, oh, definitely over 20 years old, Oh, right? he just turned... Well, the is movie just turned 21. Uh, I he know that. He can drink now. He can wow. drink now with oh, me. Oh, that's yeah. nice. But the book, um, I'm not sure exactly what... You would think I would know. You would think I would have the year it was I would think, created I would tattooed think on me. there's probably... There's pro- there had to have been a comic book of some site. Even if it was yeah. just like a one-off or something. Yeah. Well, you alluded to it, so I will skip ahead to this, but your comic book series, Danger Girl, yes. launched in 1998. How did it feel to have a comic series you created, and do you have a favorite memory from the Danger Girl series? That's a really good question. A favorite memory. There are many. A favorite. That's a tough one. Let me think of a memory, probably. Uh, well, honestly, one of the things that was the coolest was when we collected Danger Girl into a volume or into a, a, a book. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest inspirations for myself and Andy Hart and all the time when we were creating and working on the book together was our love of Bruce Campbell and the Army of Darkness uh, oh, film yeah. and Evil Dead 2. So even though it wasn't really a horror comedy comic, it had some comedy elements and there was a tone that we thought was like kind of like we loved that Bruce Campbell did. Mm-hmm. So we actually approached Bruce Campbell via uh, professional channels or something, I guess you could say, uh-huh. and to, to sort of see if he could, by the way, you're going to see some of my lights turning off there. <laughs> There's a timer going on, guys. You said the lights change. But we... Um, uh, we approached him and he did we said hey, could, would you do the intro to our book and he said yes oh <laughs> and gosh. he actually wrote a whole intro to the book and it was so cool and I did this whole drawing for him like of him like with like sitting down with a leather bound book with like a jack smoking jacket on and all his like memorabilia from uh, Briscoe County and the uh, Evil Dead oh my god and uh, he did it and then it was what was really cool too is I think about uh, maybe four or five years later uh-huh. he requested if he asked if he could use that that drawing in his biography of Chins Could Kill and so it's in that book too actually which is pretty cool so well, I didn't know that yeah. uh, I don't know if you know this but Bruce Campbell's like a hero of mine oh is that <laughs> I right love, I'm like yeah I love him oh he's the best yeah, he's oh my awesome. god uh, I, I've been sick the past week as you know yeah uh, we were supposed to film this interview like a week ago right but I just no I, I think what happened was I was turning into a dead eye oh <laughs> no I said, I said mommy's with the maggots now <laughs> oh, no. too many times and I think like it just lifting was, up the cell yeah, doors <laughs> I think it was getting to me <laughs> but uh, I have been binge watching the Ash vs. Evil Dead series it's on oh, Netflix nice, right now oh nice because that's the one blind spot in Evil Dead that I yeah I, 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 watch I honestly I haven't seen them all either it's, so it's on Netflix so now that's great because it was on Showtime or what was it's it a for? star show stars it's on I knew it was now. an yeah but it leaves April 28th. Oh. <laughs> I know. So, man, I and then I think it goes back this. to stars. Uh, but, um, yeah, I love Bruce Campbell. That's such he's a the best, yeah. cool story. I did not know that. And, yeah, yeah I so cool to hear that. Um, so I've always loved crossover events in comics. Do you have a favorite crossover comic? Um, that's a good question, actually. What crossovers? What are my favorite? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd be remiss to not say that I, I didn't... I, I, I was a fan of the... Uh, the previous version and the recent one of Spawn and Batman crossing oh, over, yeah. which I did a cover for. Mm-hmm. Look, look for that. Um, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Say, no, no laughing in the peanut gallery. Right. Um, <laughs> but my favorite crossover, you know, probably like Secret Wars in the uh, in the eighties, which uh, I think they're supposed to be building towards or something. Yeah. And I don't know if it's going to resemble anything in the cup. But back in the day, like that was like the first comic book. Like I think anytime when you're a kid, those are the some. Sim- seminal moments is that the word uh where something. like something is like it, it's it's so ingrained the 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 largeness of it that it mm-hmm. never goes away if you see something as a kid yeah i kind of think 
it's everything else is doomed to try to live up to it because everything when you're a kid is so new and so like exciting. And I didn't even know comic books did that back then, and that was like the big event. That was when Spider Man also first got his black costume and stuff like oh, that. It yeah. was like there was so much crazy oh, stuff going true. on. Oh, that's true. Yeah, there was there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on back then. So that was uh, that was a cool era. I think mm-hmm. Secret Wars. They even that was the first time too. I think they actually made action figures that you could buy next to the Star Wars figures and everything oh, like that. Oh, that's true. Off of a comic book, yeah. which is so crazy. Like, and they were Secret Wars action figures, which is crazy. Oh that gives you an idea of how big that comic book event mm-hmm. was back then that they would do that. Yeah, know, so. actually, David and I, we just remember that uh, documentary we watched on Netflix, they were talking about that. It was like the oh, Toys That right? Made Us or something, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, And they yeah. referenced that those were like the first... Uh, yeah, I love that show. ...figures the based on the comics. That's, That's so cool. Yeah. Um, what was the very first comic book cover you ever illustrated, and how did it feel? Um, It was Gen 13, number one, mm-hmm. which happened to be the comic book. It was my first comic book. You know what, Taylor? I've got that cover right over there. Oh, yeah. I actually you want to show it, it off? I sure. I actually, I, I didn't know that was going to be your question, but I actually, I actually do yeah. have it. Like, like the original, original? The original, original. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, if I see what you might have to edit, because I have to. Is, how much is that worth? Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, here it is right here. $1 million. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. That I mean, is, I could edit this out, but also, it. like... Oh my gosh! So, so this my, is like the original, original. original. Yeah, I've held on to it for this long, so it's Until like so that's, so that's like 1993. I didn't know if it was 93 or 94. Oh my god! So that's my very first cover I did. This so. is so cool. What year did you say? 1993. So, so I, I think was, it's I was two years old. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm I'm old, Taylor. No, no. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is so cool <laughs> to see. This dust on me. But how did it feel to illustrate your first comic book? Well, not that too. I did this when I was 19 years old too, which is even oh crazier. God. So, so I was like very noob, very, very sort of like, <laughs> like ridiculous that they were giving me that. Kind I should of just hold this the rest of the interview and just like <laughs> smile. This is like to hold this in my hand. I'm like shaking right now. Oh no, that kidding. is so cool. Yeah, so that's funny. It's funny that you should ask that. Oh Normally I wouldn't have that available, but it's or at at, a, at an arms like yeah. reach. But I I came up recently because uh, it was in a discussion recently. So yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Up. Right now I'm gonna set the first comic book cover he ever did on top of the, <laughs> the most recent one I'm doing. One. I, know, I know. There's quite a gap there. I won't say what it is, but it's so cool. I can't wait for you guys to see this one he's working on right now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh my god, thank you for showing me that. Oh, that of is course. so cool. I'm glad that worked out. Uh, okay, do you remember the first time you ever saw your artwork in a comic book shop? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, that one I just showed you, I do remember that because that was I was excited that that was my first like, like full blown comic book, like mm-hmm. like cover to cover. But um, it, gosh, that's a good question. Was that the first one I remember actually seeing? I know I did some interiors of like a the the, the, the studio I was working for at the time was called Homage Studios. Mm-hmm. That was what they housed the, the, that new brand. A bunch of artists had broken off from. Um, Marvel at the time and started Image Comics and that studio was Homage Studios and there the first thing I ever did was the, the Homage Studios swimsuit issue. They used to do these <laughs> they used to do like comic book swimsuit issues uh-huh. back then, which is kinda of funny. I think they're kinda of on the way back. We'll see if they they come back. But and I had done two pinups in there, but I don't remember going to the comic book store and actually seeing those ones. So it might have been it might have been when I did this this comic here, Gen thirteen. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. All right. Who in the world of comics inspires you, whether it be a writer, an illustrator, or a creator? Um, well again, I think I think my the one I mentioned before, Arthur Adams, is was my core original influence for doing comic books. And I think even though my style has morphed and changed and and evolved over the years, I think the bones and the structure are still very much based on what I learned from like just devouring Arthur Adams comic books. <laughs> And uh, so he's to say he's not the biggest influence would be sort of <laughs> not fair to the imp- impact he had. And thankfully, I got to become uh, in in the last ten or fifteen years pretty close friends with him. So it's kind of fun. Oh. We actually get to see each other at Comic Con all the time, and it's, it's oh, super that's cool. So, cool. so yeah, he's a super nice guy. That's that's crazy to, to and be still able to. and still drawing as much as ever the guy's like yeah. drawing out. I mean, he's not he's not that much older than me. I think he was pretty young when he got into. So so he's, he, if you're 21, he's 22. That's it. I, I, yeah, I'm really that? good that's, at math. That's the perfect math. I didn't realize you were so good at this. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, to be able to 
have someone that you look up to and who is such an inspiration yeah. and to, to be friends with them. That's that's and not and not awesome. let you down is like like oh, oh this guy's yeah. a jerk or something. That's like the that. other that's, <laughs> that's the other part of it. That's the worst. You don't want that to happen. Oh, that's so great. Uh, what can you tell me about your work with fairy tale fantasies? Mm-hmm. Uh, because I'm obsessed with the Cinderella and the Red Riding Hood figures that you yeah. have in yeah. the kitchen. Well, the last time I saw them, they were in the right, kitchen. Right, right. They move around. But they, yeah, they move around. <laughs> I think the mermaid is in here, I think. I think it's the one that's up here. Oh, yeah. Now and then Mary Jane, but she's not part of that. Um, uh, yeah, that's a, well, it's funny. It's it's a project that I did about 10 years ago, mm-hmm. and I did it originally as a calendar. The, the thought was I was a big fan of uh, an illustrator from the 1950s and 60s. He was like a pinup painter Mm -hmm. and he would do kind of like kind of like norman rockwell type paintings but more like pinup girl style Uh and uh careful she she wobbles wait i think you should hold her i'm so scared (laughs) to drop her i'm just gonna drop her here's one of them kids oh my god this is one of them this is a variant color because we did about three different color schemes this is the last one we did but that's that's uh thank you thank you thank you i'm too scared um but um so yeah but it was it started off as a pinup series where i wanted to do like old like old style pinup calendars because uh-huh. that's what these would do, be if you ever look up gil elfgren he a lot of his images have been repurposed over the years but it's like it's it's usually that sort of classic girl next door sort of getting her dress pin you know hooked on a nail and she's all ooh that kind of it's <laughs> it's silly stuff but it was very sort of of the era and i wanted to sort of bridge that with sort of but like with fairy tales so take the fairy tale aspect but kind of bring it into this sort of like pinuppy yeah. calendar sort of realm so i mean it's it's obviously meant to be sort of playful a little bit gearing towards an older audience mm-hmm. it tends to be more comic book audience not the kid as much as as much as they make comic books seem like it's a kids medium to me it was never a kids medium it was like a teenage medium but i always felt like saturday morning the way it kind of worked for me was there's saturday morning cartoons uh-huh. And then after I got a little bit bored with Saturday morning cartoons and I felt they weren't sophisticated enough, you kind of would then move on to the comic book store. And the comic book store was like, I always remember the comic book store being kind of a little bit dangerous in a cool way. Like like you, when you walked into a comic book store, it wasn't really, I mean, again, the, sort of the way the movies have made it sound and, and we're kind of living in an era where they're kind of making comic books and Marvel comic books seem like they're supposed to be for like little tiny kids and stuff like that mm-hmm. and, and all the way to adult. But right. But comic books back then had a little bit of danger to them. They were a little bit edgy. Um, like when I would walk into a comic book store, they would have like Frank Frazetta paintings, and they were like Ooh. usually very scantily clad, like buxom women. And just you My walk favorite. in, yeah, you walk and you would walk in, you would go like, oh, this is a little bit edgy. And yeah. I love that aspect of comic books. And I've always sort of tried to keep an eye on sort of that edginess kind of. So this kind of, the calendar series was always meant to be. Not, it's not meant even those fairy tales. Mm-hmm. It's fairy tales in the sense of like. Halloween when people dress up as like the sexy version of like Red Riding or something. so that was sort of the idea is like tap into that energy and so we did I did a bunch of images uh, I think I did four calendars in all and then we started turning them into statues through Sideshow and gosh I've lost track of what how many statues were and I think we have statue number seven and eight coming out soon like oh it's gosh. like so it's it's a yeah it's been very successful and and then I'm also uh, working on a, a new calendar to help co- that's supposed to be coming out this year actually so oh yeah yeah that's awesome i remember the first time i was ever here was on halloween yeah <laughs> uh, that's I, right i crashed your guys's halloween party. i was like i know you god that was like the funniest thing i don't funny. think we've ever told this story no not. uh this is scott's second time on my youtube channel now we did a review oh i guess i didn't mention it off the top when i called you the yeah. biggest avatar fan <laughs> we did a review of avatar the way of water that's on right. my channel i think I guess, we were like, both seeing it the second time yeah it was yeah. both of our second viewing right. we did that i think in like december yeah but the first time uh, i ever met scott so our mutual friend Creus, uh, <laughs> Chris Carr. Creus. We were, yeah, Creus. We were at a <clears throat> Halloween party. I just went through puberty. Sorry. I'm getting to 21. I'm getting there. When it's time to change. <laughs> and um, she was leaving to come here. And I was like, oh, as a joke, I should go to the next party you're at and like trick or treat and then just leave. And I was dressed as Shrek. <laughs> And by that, I mean, I had like a Shrek beanie on, but right, you know, right. So then, uh, it was just supposed to be a joke. And then <laughs> I rang the doorbell and it was funny cause you, you recognized me immediately. Yeah, right. I was very drunk. I'm just gonna, <laughs> you, you guys well. know I was very it was late. Halloween. So everybody kind of had that baseline. And then you very nicely invited David and I in and I was no. like, Oh my God, we're not, we're not supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't know this whole part of it. Cause well, it was funny because I even said, uh Oh, is Chris here? Yeah. And then 
next to you was Chris Sanders, and you're like, which Chris are you looking for? <laughs> oh, right, right, right. And I was like, oh my god, how many Chris's are at like <laughs> that's right. like, Chris Carr? And I was like, <laughs> oh. but it was really funny. But the point of the story is that was a good party. Yeah, that, that was, was a really, party. really fun party. And it was like a Monday night Halloween party. Wasn't oh my like god, that? It wasn't it even was, like a Saturday. It was. It was, it was, all out. It was literally all out. The, yeah. the Halloween. Yeah. Oh my god, I cannot wait till Halloween. Oh, okay, okay. Two things. So the point of that story was, yeah. yes, there is a point, I promise, was that that was the first time I ever saw the Red Riding Hood sculpture. Because oh, Tanya right, pointed right. it out that night. That was right. one of the like three things I remember from that night. Is she was like, oh, look at this uh, Red Riding Hood. And you said that Scott did it. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> to see, I don't know, to see like a, a product, like a physical thing. Yeah, that oh no. It's, I mean, I've, had, I've been fortunate enough to have created quite a few designs that have been turned into three dimensional so but you never get like you never like uh over it you're like it's always like so cool when you take it out of the box and you're yeah. just like oh my gosh i can't believe this is That's i mean so I, cool. over the years i've gotten more and more like ridiculously attentive about how i want them to come <laughs> out so it's like ridiculous amount of drawings to mm -hmm. get it that way i should at this point I should just learn how to sculpt because it would be oh much quicker <laughs> That'd be fun. but uh but they're very talented artists who i work with who, mm -hmm. who bring these things to life and i just i'm just very I, I want it to look how I want it to look, mm -hmm. so I get very sort of very yeah no <laughs> I particular too. yeah. So it's like they they take a lot to design some some like a crazy amount to design like that Cinderella for instance. It was crazy to get that dress That's figured so cool, out. So cool, you guys. But they're super cool, and it's I never get tired of doing it. It's it's such a thrill to get those things and have them on a shelf. It's like these like little they're like these little trophies of your like life in some weird way. Of all these like little moments, these things you created. You know? oh, that is so cool. Yeah. And then the second thing, not even related at all, but I know what I'm going to be for Halloween. This oh. year, do you want to know? You guys want to know? Spoiler alert! Yeah. I know. Spoiler alert! I'm gonna dress as the cheese grater from <laughs> Evil Dead Rise. <laughs> I haven't seen this movie. Yet. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> wow. If you haven't seen the movie, it's in the trailer. I'm, I'm curious now. There's a scene where they're in the kitchen and the deadite comes with <laughs> with a cheese grater. Death by cheese grater. Well, she puts it on the back of the girl's leg oh. and kind of drags it. So I want to be a cheese oh. grater for Halloween, but I also want like <laughs> clumps of flesh to be dangling out of it. Oh my God. Just the, I can see David just cringing even thinking about it again. David wants no part <laughs> he's, like, he's like, why did you remind me of this? If I say mommy's with the maggots one more time, he's going to leave me. Uh oh, that, that time doesn't count because I had to explain it. <laughs> All right. Back, back to the questions yes. at hand, you guys. From Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four to Spawn and Batman, which which you did mention earlier, uh, you've drawn so many iconic characters. Is there a character out there that you haven't drawn yet that you would like to? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, it's funny. A few years ago, there was a Batman Fifty where he was Batman Issue Fifty, which wasn't really Fifty. They just renumber these things all the time. But uh, but th at the time it was Batman Fifty, oh. and he was marrying Selena Kyle. Uh, so that was their big, the big event. Uh -huh. And I did these like connecting covers where it was like sort of the rogues gallery of the heroes and villains. And that was super fun because up until that point, I had never drawn a lot of Batman's like oh. cool villains yeah. and, and even like the good guys. And like, I always think Batman mm -hmm. and Spider-Man have the best like ensemble of additional characters, yeah. whether it's the villains, especially the villains, the right. villains in particular, but Batman also has a lot of cool cohorts and sort of buddies mm -hmm. and stuff like that so to me it's like i i got a taste of it but i felt there was some some of the batman villains i couldn't fit i couldn't fit them all on there's just too many so i i would like another crack at that at some point because i always feel like every comic book artist wants to draw spider-man and batman those those seem to be the ones that come up all the time uh -huh. so to me it's like i didn't get enough of batman i dabbled but i i didn't get enough so that would be the one all right that's I'm gonna keep my mouth shut though. <laughs> yes, there might be something some, somewhere yeah, I'm that you might have keep seen. my mouth shut. <laughs> That's true. All right, can you tell me about uh, oh the story about Jim Lee inviting you to move to San Diego to work for him? Yes, uh, that was pretty wild because he the at the time comic books were really blowing up in the early '90s. I mean, they were probably at an all-time high. Uh, they were selling crazy. I think Jim Lee, who was the the artist on X Men at the time, the X Men number one had just sold some like. 8 million copies which was crazy at the time I think it was the biggest selling comic book ever oh, wow. and then within about and that was following up Todd McFarlane doing Spider-Man number one which also had been a record breaker just right before that so these were these were like the records being broken at the time and both these artists broke off to start Image Comics where they created their own characters mm -hmm. and up until then I always was told if you want to break into comic books it's almost like you have to like 
annoy them to death to have them like <laughs> like even take you serious or right? even even open your letter yeah like they're basically saying don't get discouraged if you have to send it in multiple times that's always how it goes i think todd mcfarland i think famously had like something like 60 rejection letters or something crazy like that yeah so i was like okay this is going to be a long haul this is gonna but right off the bat jim lee in the back of his first issue of wildcats had oh talent contest looking for talent and i was going like this is exactly what I was told they don't do. They're actually <laughs> asking for talent. So I very quickly put together like uh, a sample pack. I was, I, I figured, okay, if I'm going to get attention to show I'm serious, I will draw his characters. I will start over from oh, scratch. I will draw yeah. Wildcats because I'm thinking from the point of view of somebody hiring me. I'm going, okay, they're going to want to see me do the characters. they got to imagine hiring me. So mm-hmm. I will draw their characters. And, and so I... I think I did like a, a, a panel to panel page. I did a splash page with some additional panels. And then I think I did a cover. Like I just like a hodgepodge of all the things I could do. And then, I, and then on top of that, I put it in a manila envelope. And I drew on the envelope. Oh my god! Because gosh. I wanted the envelope to stand out like crazy too. Like so that it wouldn't just sit there for days. That somebody would go like, whoa, I got to open <laughs> this envelope. And all those things worked because like he called me. I think on the phone within like a week and a half, meaning it must have just been like enough time to get there right. for him to open it. And I had missed the first call too. That was the funny thing. My mom, my mom said something like, "Yeah, um, somebody called for you, uh, James Lee or J- oh, Jim Lee." I was like, God. I was like, what? Like, and to me, like when you're in the comic books, that's like Tom Cruise calling. You. Yeah, oh my God. it's like that's just as excited. I was, I was like, oh my God, this is like a famous person oh in my, my life. God. And uh, thankfully, I got I was there for the second call. And yeah, he's like, he, he loved the samples. He goes, do you want to move out to San Diego? At the time I was living in Colorado. And I was like, uh, yes, please. I mean, I don't know what I was agreeing to at the time because I was 19 years old. I was like, I, I, yeah, I mean, I'll move to another state where I don't know anybody. But it, it worked out. It was pretty exciting. It was a very exciting time to be, you know, experiencing all this like change. And the, I, I was in a studio with these amazing artists. I felt like I was like, it was, that was like my college, yeah. like going to this studio and spending the first like, you know several years of my career around these artists that were so good and it was so fun to just learn from them and watch what they did it's really cool that is crazy i could not imagine well okay now we have cell phones yeah <laughs> no, not to bring yeah. up anything I know. this was the phone like tethered <laughs> to the kitchen where you had to like have the cord with the, the yeah. little i can't imagine missing and... that call that would yeah. i would i would probably die just from like being you know so scared fu- you know what's funny is i did have though it was funny because back then you <laughs> this is, i'm so, so dating myself <laughs> Back then, you had these like little tiny tapes you put in like little like recorder to record oh the God. messages. So I had that. I had Jim Lee leaving the message. Uh-huh. So that for the longest time, I had that like as like a little like like memento. Like, oh, this is when Jim Lee hired me. It was so cool. But I think I've since completely oh, yeah. lost track of where that is. But yeah, that was kind of funny. Ugh. But you mentioned your mom, and I yeah. wasn't going to do this. Yes. But we should talk about it because this is yeah could be like the coolest connection in the history of hi- history. And it's going to be a mystery we still have to solve because we're going to solve it. We're going to solve it. But um. Most of you know that David and I have a matching tattoo that we got. Our first trip together ever was to Solving, which is like a little Danish town up uh, like two hours north of Cal- like where I live in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah. I'm very bad with directions. <laughs> but yeah, we have these <laughs> matching windmill are. tattoos. So maybe like a month ago, yeah, Scott and I were texting. And we were talking about solving, like going to solving or something. Yeah, and I said, I mentioned, I said, oh, my mom's always told us this story that she lived in a windmill in solving. And I, I'm also kind of like, I've only been there. It's funny, I should go there again. I've only been there once, and it's been quite a long time ago, mm-hmm. back when we were kids, and, and I would go there and stuff like that. And so I'm not aware of how many windmills there are, but you're saying there's pretty much one distinctive one, right? Well... There's one when you so he sent me a photo of yeah. the windmill that his mother grew up in in, in solving, and oh she and, lived there like in her like early like like adulthood. Sort oh, okay, of. okay. Yeah. But when you sent me that picture, I immediately was like, oh my god, because there's only a handful left. Right, right. I don't know how many were how like uh, a, a long time ago how many yeah. were, were there. But when you sent me that picture, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so I immediately text him back. There's a picture of David and I, and then another picture with David June and I, our puppy, um, in front of the windmill that we based our tattoos off of and it certainly like, looks like it it looks like it had a paint job or two but it structurally yeah. did look like it i've got like 90 percent i've sure. got to get confirmation also too i mean i have to like ask my mom what were the geographical <laughs> things around it because obviously it's a long time ago yeah we were going back now like, it's like a gift shop and a winery like a wine yeah. um shop but it did look like it it definitely i'm, I'm gonna have to get some sort of confirmation i i but what are the odds? It would have been nice if i had it before the interview but i know well we could leave this open until <laughs> the next one but could you imagine if 
the that's tattoo a, that David and I have on us, level that's windmill. That's a funny full circle uh, multiverse. That thing. is great. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, there's got to be some kind of math involved there's in gotta that. Got to be. Got to be. <laughs> All right, so in February of 2006. Oh, and you just you just posted this the other day too. But I swear I had this I had this question before you yeah. posted it. You were featured in the 200th issue of Nintendo Power magazine. Oh, right, right, right. Rest in peace. I used to I used to subscribe to that magazine. Oh, did you really? I think yeah, I love awesome. that one. Um, with your poster, yeah, which included characters such as Mario, Luigi, Link, uh, my favorite Kirby. <laughs> so Kirby. you might think you know <laughs> where this question's <laughs> going. <laughs> I don't know if I do. Uh, who do you play as in Mario Kart? Oh, who do I? <laughs> who did I play? I, I'm trying to think. Did I get to play? No, I did. Oh, I, I. Who was I? Dry, dry, not dry Bowser. That's no, I was. I, I thought I was Dry Bowser. Dry Bowser. I think it was Dry Bowser. I always try and snap up Dry Bowser. Or maybe I was two characters. I think it was Dry Bowser once, and I think I, I think was. It was dry Bones. Oh, is that who it was? Okay, the Koopa. myself here. Okay, I yeah, play as they, King Boo. King Boo. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Who was playing you know, King Boo with our group? There was somebody was. That was you. Oh. oh, that was you. Mario Party King Boo. Oh, nice. right, right. I might be thinking Mario Party too because I don't think I got to jump in on the last time we played when we resurrected the uh, Mario Kart. Oh my god, we have to have a Mario Kart night, especially in the backyard. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that'd be Ooh. great. That'd oh be my awesome. god, and we can come cosplaying. That would be fun. That would be cool, actually. Let's all dress as Shrek. Okay, to play Mario Kart. <laughs> they do have a Shrek. I mean, I know this is a little off topic, but and I own it. It's on the GameCube. It's a Shrek. It's like called like Crash and Smash or something. It's a Shrek uh, wow. Mario Kart game. Oh, wow. And instead That's of funny. vehicles, it's like like if you're Donkey, I think you ride Dragon. <laughs> I think for Shrek, it's the Onion Carriage. I have that. Is so it a good game though? Is it? Does it? Does it? I mean, it's not. Up to the side you're building. <laughs> it's not. Not, it. no, not great. <laughs> but the options there <laughs> but oh yeah so anyways back to that nintendo yes. power magazine picture yes that picture is so cool and i know you just oh, posted thanks. it because the movie's out now yeah it's a little bit of an oldie but a goodie yeah I, david i forgot i think i forgot to show you this i had that issue did you really with, oh wow so because it was like a fold out like yeah it, yeah and i don't think i have it anymore but that i don't either that don't blows my mind <laughs> that, that you too. drew a picture that i had for forever that is i remember cool. as a kid because that is i was cool. like all my favorite nintendo characters and that was funny too because at that time it's, it goes a ways back now too but at that time they were revisiting contacting me because i was like someone who made good because i had been in a nintendo magazine before that with a contest i won a contest oh. designed the ultimate video game this was going back to like the late 80s uh-huh so I think somewhere, somebody somewhere along the way at Nintendo found out that I had become a successful comic book artist. So they did a fo- that was a follow up piece where they oh, said, wow. "Oh, we want to feature you. Can can you do another piece?" And that, so that was actually strangely enough a a, a re, a, like a circle back, which oh, was even funnier. So that is so cool. Yeah, yeah, I love that poster. I wish I had that issue, but I really don't think I. Which do. issue? What number was it? It was the two hundredth issue. Two hundredth issue. Wow, that's so funny. Yeah, because they couldn't have kept going much after that then, because yeah. they, they stopped at some point. Yeah. All right. I am so excited. I, David, I don't think I told you this either. <laughs> but among my research, I found out that in 2007, you illustrated the covers for the Freddy versus Jason oh, versus yeah. Ash limited yeah. series. That's right. Uh, as you know, I am a huge... Connecting covers. Connecting yes. Covers. Huge horror fan. Yep. Uh, what was it like working with those iconic horror characters? It was a lot of fun, too. Were they because- nice? <laughs> That was the, are they nice? Yeah, they posed and stayed still. No, that was a lot of fun because at that point I had done, I mentioned Bruce Campbell earlier, and I had actually drawn Bruce uh, several times for the comic book covers, too. I've drawn Ash several times, actually. So that was not the, even the first time I had drawn Ash. I had drawn him. There was a, di- believe it or not, after he had done that in- intro for it, we, we, somebody had the rights for Army of Darkness, and there was an Army of Darkness Danger Girl crossover that happened at one point, so they... They were cro- they crossed over. That's the one I should have asked, answered your other one. What's the best crossover? Oh, uh, so so I drawn I had drawn Ash then uh-huh. as Bruce Campbell as Ash, and uh, that might have been the, and then I did a cover for the Evil Dead comic book or maybe Army of Darkness cover. So that was like the third or fourth time I'd drawn him. So it was kind of uh-huh. fun at that point. I'd kind of figured out how to break down Bruce Campbell's kind of face. The sad part is about that though is I um, a little footnote. At that point, I didn't know. I found this out years later that uh, he was actually having a bit of a dispute with the company over it, whether or not he they could use his likeness or not. Oh wow! And I think there was some bad blood. I don't know if they worked it out or not. So I actually felt really bad at the time because I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So I think that I, 
I think that he there might have been time. I'm sure he wouldn't hold it against me, but I, but I think at that, some point it was like it wasn't it wasn't really clear if I was able to draw his likeness or not. Oh, no. but I did draw yeah. his likeness, so I didn't know. <laughs> but uh, but that was super fun. Also, too, I really liked when I drew Freddy and Jason because again, bringing up my sort of comic book approach. My thought was, okay, think of these as like Marvel characters. How would their body types be? So to me, like if you look at that cover, Freddy's very sort of elongated, and I kind of gave him like almost yeah. like a spidery, like Spider Man kind of like like oh. like with the nails. I kind of like really pulled his anatomy a lot. And then with uh, Jason, I tried to give him like almost like a Hulk, like blocky. <laughs> so I was really pushing the stylistic part to really kind of push their two personality traits to the extreme. Mm-hmm. So because my style, I always. It's not really a realistic style. I always like to try to find shapes and try to pull and tug and exaggerate where I can because mm-hmm. to me that's where the dynamics really come into play. Ooh. Yeah. You know what's funny? So we've mentioned Bruce Campbell like three times. Yeah, right? a lot. <laughs> I just up. realized I'm going to be covering an event in June. Yeah. So in a couple months that he's going to be attending. Oh, which event? Uh, who? Monster Palooza. I haven't Oh, yeah. My, my, that be... might be the one my daughter's super excited. She's funny. She actually now does a cosplay and she... Uh, has been dressing up as a as a girl version of Ash, which is so funny. I mean, it's a, it'd be, be it'd be fun. really fun to be in a circumstance where like I could see Bruce again and sort of say, "Hey, this." We is- should all go <laughs> dressed as Bruce Campbell. <laughs> there you go. Just be a family. Of Bruce yeah, Campbell. just a family of. You Bruce know, he's Campbell. probably seen that more than we think. Actually. Oh my gosh, that'd be really fun. Yeah. All right, so my final question. Okay. Hasbro is about to release its Marvel Legends series, Marvel's. Rogue X Men figure. That's the full title. Yeah. So it's it's a rogue figure being put out by uh, Hasbro. Yes. And first of all, this figure is so cool. I've looked at it like a hundred times. <laughs> um, but I have a couple questions about it. First of all, uh, what is it like to have? I know we touched about it earlier with the the sculptures. But what is it like to have a figure uh, based on your artwork? And yeah. How excited are you for this one in particular? Because this rogue that you drew, <laughs> that it's based on, and yeah. your artwork is going to be featured on the box. It's on the box. Well, that was the giveaway. That <sighs> was the so giveaway cool. kind of. I mean, it's 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 funny. I mean, it's it's a little bit of a social media sort of like lean where I'm kind of like going like, hey, look, it's like my rogue. But the truth is, I think they just go through their catalog of of images and mm-hmm. they probably. But when they had it on the on the side of the box, and then I really looked at the sculpt, I was like. I can't imagine that they weren't looking at my specific version because right. they just have little touches that just very much look like they were leaning towards my interpretation. So mm-hmm. that was really cool. It's it's not an official thing where they have my name or they acknowledge it that way. But I also like uh, I follow uh, a guy who's who's a really cool ambassador uh, with oh. with um, with Hasbro oh. on on uh, Instagram. Goes by the name Mr. Stevie, and he mm-hmm. kind of like we kind of chat a little bit back and forth here and there, and he kind of. With a wink and a nod, kind of was saying like, "Yeah, that's basically what we decided to do. It's 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 a rogue based on you, kind of, oh, with like so not cool. officially acknowledging it, but it's right. like, but yeah, it's super cool. I mean, it's like, I mean, I, I wish they'd do that more often because yeah. uh, I know a few years back there was a high, a lot of people would come up to me and thought there was a particular Spider Man action oh, figure that they really? thought was uh-huh. very much based on my version of Spider Man. I was always with Spider Man. It's really tough because mm-hmm. it's like, how do you really nail down a style when it's that? So you have to be really extreme with your style to sort of have it pick up on a figure that big. But I thought it was cool that people thought that, you know, so it's, it's kind of neat when that happens. But yeah, I'll definitely get that Rogue. I mean, Rogue's one of my favorite characters to yeah. begin with, so it's, it'll be fun to, to have that action figure. And the figure's just, like, so gorgeous. The colors. And it's really uh, cool. I can't wait to see hair. it. I can't yeah. wait to see it in production, too, because oh it's, like, uh, it'll be really neat to see it. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's this summer. I think, like, July or August. Is that right? I think so. Look at you on top of this. That's I think. Great. Wow. <laughs> Imagine I, 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 I mean, I, I'm so so bad at this stuff. <laughs> All right, and then uh, I just wanted to make sure before we wrap this up that we mention your website for people to go and visit to oh, yeah. order stuff, make purchases. For sure, it's it's super easy. It's jscottcampbell.com. So it's my name with one of those dot com things at the end. So, <laughs> and uh, I will have links to your website and to nice. your social media and everything in the description of this video. Yeah, there's all kinds of uh, you know uh, sketchbooks uh, uh, for sale there. Uh, tons of comic book covers, all mm-hmm. kinds of like art books, things like that. And autograph right. copies too, right? Autograph copies. Yeah. We do we do put those on there too. Uh, CGC graded comics. Oh yeah, well. CGC graded. Yeah, we do that too. So that's that's. Uh, very exciting from me to you oh yeah well thank you so okay okay the star of say yes to the dress tanya is laughing at us looks like a curtain (laughs) there we go she said her iconic line line. classic tanya i'll be here all night you get a nicole kidman clap for that 
<laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me. Taylor, I it was a pleasure. This was, was really fun. And uh, we'll have to keep everyone updated on the windmill mystery. Yeah, I know. I wish I had that answer for you. For the, that would be perfect. What a, clo- what a perfect close that would have been. But I guess I'll have to tune in for season, season two. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys. We're going to go eat some pizza. Yes. And uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Bye. Bye.